Good evening. I hope that you're well and your glass is half full rather than half empty. As always, you know you can top it back up again no matter where you are. Hopefully um, this evening is a nice evening for you and you're getting into the new year and uh, your new year's resolutions for those that made them. Um, they're working out for you. You're going to the gym, starting a college course, looking for a new job, finding out if you can find a new partner or a partner at all. All good stuff. Keep it up, stick to your goals the best you can. Now today's talk is about short-term gains versus long-term losses. And we fall into this trap quite a lot as humans because our brain is hardwired to solve problems immediately as they present themselves. And that goes back to our uh, tribal selves, two, three, four, seven thousand years ago. And then we just saw a danger and it needed to be sorted out straight away. But now we live far more complicated lives. So strategical thinking is far more beneficial to what outcomes you're looking for in, in, in each individual's life. So today's talk is on short-term gains versus long-term losses. And a way I could look at that, I'll explain that, is a bit like magpies. Magpies go from one shiny object to the next and to the next and to the next. And they never really take on board what they are taking on board. It's just not important. It's a shiny thing, it looks good, they want it. Some of us are like that when it comes to such things like mobile phones, laptops, cars, everything needs to be done quickly. As soon as we've got it in our house, we're dissatisfied with it and we want the next new thing. So if we can hold that for a second and put that down and start changing our thought processes to look at what are our long-term goals and our objectives and how we can get there. And I suppose the best thing to look at as a comparison or something that actually does work is time. Time reveals everything. So what you can see at the moment, given enough time, you'll have a better perspective of what's really going on. So something happens, a problem presents itself today, the best thing you can do is stand back from that problem. Don't come up with quick answers. Try to give it perspective. Try to stand back and look at all the possible outcomes that could happen from your decision that you take. Um, another way to look at these sort of things is imagine yourself at the bottom of a mountain and what you can see at the bottom of that mountain which is just anything that is around you that you can currently see. But as you start to climb the side of the mountain, you get a better understanding, a better perspective of what's around you and what's going on. And when you actually reach the top of the mountain, you've got a very, very, very clear view of everything that's going on. And you can make absolutely fantastic decisions because you can see all of the evidence that you can see from the top of the mountain. Hopefully that makes sense and that can be applied to your future thinking. Another thing to think about is that when you're in the present moment, you definitely have things that you might need to solve. Like for example, nowadays, well, recently we've been experiencing terrorism. Yeah, that's a major threat. It's something that people need to look out for, to be on point about, but it's an immediate threat. But the long-term threat would be something like Global warming. Whether you believe it or not, this is just a comparison. Would be global warming, and that would be a long-term threat, not an immediate danger to us right now today. But the long longer the time goes on, the more apparent that threat will become. And if it is true that we lose the planet, then that long-term threat is the most important threat that we should be thinking about, rather than the immediate threat, which is obviously terrorism, as I've said. So these are the ways that we're looking at, the compare and contrast between long-term gains, long-term objectives, short-term gains, and short-term losses, long-term losses, which is what this talk is about. So we have consequences from our actions. And some of the consequences that we, we have from our actions in the short term lead to consequences that we didn't expect or anticipate in the long term. So things you can do now lead you to have lots of problems in the future. So it's good to sit down 
if you're, if you're presented with a problem or a challenge or something that you want to do, try to look at what the possibilities are going to be from the action you take. Try to, try to look at life as like become a strategic person rather than a reactionary person. Reactionary means that you're dealing with things and problems as they present themselves and basically um, put, you know, putting plasters on things to try to sort out a situation that just occurred. It's occurred. Rather than if you plan ahead, then you'll know what's likely to happen. The cracks in the road, the pivots on, on, on the doors and where you will go and find your way to success for whatever you're looking forward to or whatever goals you're trying to set for yourself. Now, some things that have happened in history that I can use to give you some example of this. So, uh, was it 44 BC? Um, Julius Caesar was in power in Rome. And his co he, the conspirators that killed him believed that he was going to turn Rome into a uh, uh, dictatorship. So they assassinated him. They killed him. But in the confusion, his cousin, Octavius, Octavius took over and he made it a monarchy. He did make it a, a, a dictatorship. And it was revealed later that Julius Caesar had no intention of turning Rome into a dictatorship. So by taking action, they inadvertently brought, a, brought about what they didn't want to happen to them, which was a dictatorship. So another one is in India in the 1900s, the colonists that were there, the British, they were there. And they found it challenging the amount of cobras that were around, that were attacking them, making their life uncomfortable. So they offered to pay the indigenous people, the Indian people that live there, money to give them dead cobras, to bring kill cobras and bring them to them. So, of course, what happened was the indigenous people started breeding cobras and then taking them to the English to sell. The English caught onto this and said, well, OK, we no longer want to buy cobras off of the indigenous people. So the indigenous people let the, the, the cobras that they've been breeding free. So it tripled the amount of cobras that was in India at the time. So the effect is called the cobra effect. So you're trying to solve one problem and you make the problem worse by not thinking ahead of some of the consequences that could take place by your actions in that time. So how can we come to look at this as a way of thinking in our own personal lives? When you're presented with a problem, look at the possible scenarios. When you get to a certain age, you kind of get to have an idea of what can happen next. So slow your brain down, don't look for quick problem solving, look at the possible spin-offs from that situation. Don't look at the short-term gains. Think about the long-term losses. And this is what we call consequential thinking. So you think of the consequences of your actions, what they will lead to. How will it affect you next year? The year after that, and maybe three years later, or even 10 years ahead. So please bear this in mind. If you think this talk was useful to you, give me a like share it with your friends, leave comments. I'd like to hear what people think about this. Uh, until two weeks time, do take care of yourself. Do your best to stay positive. If you're not subscribed to this channel, do subscribe. Take care of yourself. Bye for now.